Hello and welcome to the Nintendo Switch Online Game Club, the show where we play through the games available on Nintendo's various NSO apps completely at random. I'm your host, Derek Bittner, and in this episode, I'm joined once again by Caro, who last time played Streets of Rage 2. How are you doing, Caro? Hanging in there, heating up in this heat wave, but otherwise doing okay. <laughs> Glad to hear it. And Digimanda, who last time also played a Genesis game, Fantasy Star 4. How you doing? I am. I'm okay. I also had to make sure that I had an AC so that I wasn't burning in here. <laughs> we, we're trying not to go to be set on fire. We're doing our best. But as you're both likely aware, there are now over 200 games across the NSO. And while some are widely known like Super Mario Brothers and Zelda, there are some odd picks that could be considered hidden gems. We honestly don't know. So what we do is enter all those games into a randomizer, pick one, and then give our initial thoughts. And this week, the Wheel of Games has chosen Columns for the Sega Genesis. What is our history with Columns? I'm going to start with you, Amanda, because I know exactly what it is. Because, um, So this show has kind of turned into, let's teach Amanda about the Genesis. <laughs> <laughs> That's basically it. I have no idea. I had to just look at a picture and I'm like, oh, it's like Candy Crush or Tetris or... Dr. Eggman's Mean Bean Machine, or something along those lines. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm learning. You're 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 getting a lot of different genres too. So I I like that we give we're giving you some variety. But uh, mm -hmm. maybe Caro, what what what's your history with columns? Can you illuminate us a little bit? Yes. So I owned a Genesis, but I never actually owned columns for it. Um, I think I played it for the first time through. Um, the Sega Genesis collection on Switch. Hmm. And like, it's it's a pretty fun puzzle game. Um, I think it's more on the antiquated side of things in terms of like gameplay, how it looks music wise, um, stuff like that. But um, it's still a pretty fun playthrough, though figuring out how to chain things and how to like get points kind of takes some getting used to because it's different than how other games work. But I'm excited to revisit it and see what else I can do in it. I'm pretty much in the same boat as you, Caro. I grew up with a Genesis. Uh, I've I always saw columns. It was always on the back of the boxes, like the games they advertise. But I never picked it up for whatever reason. It just didn't click with me in the same way that Tetris did. It's like well, I already have Tetris, and I didn't actually play it until the Sonic's. I believe the Sonic's Ultimate Genesis Collection on PS3, which is where I played a lot of uh, Genesis games I never played before but only enough to actually get the trophy because the game didn't click with me that much at the time. But I also was, I wasn't sure what I was expecting because Columns is different if, if I'm remember, remembering correctly that I'm so used to rotating when it comes to puzzle games. And there's no rotating in this game. You don't shift it around in any way. They're always a vertical column. Instead, you change up the, uh, I believe, the how the colors are, and that's how you set up the matching. So it's always vertical, and then you change up what, uh, what colors are matched up, and that's how you get your um, connections and, and combos and all that. So what I'm hearing is that this is Tetris at home. Like, <laughs> like I've got Tetris. Yeah, basically. I've got Tetris at home. Yeah. <laughs> we, we needed to find some way yeah. to make ourselves different. <laughs> mm -hmm. I mean, I'm excited to try it. I have no, any experience at all with this game franchise. I have no experience at all with any Sega Genesis game franchise, really. So mm -hmm. they're really throwing it at me. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm like, I'm trying to look up anything more about the game. But honestly, it, it, that really is it. It is a, it's just came out in 1989 it is based off the tetris craze and it was ported a bunch so it was somewhat successful i suppose but mm, i believe there were team. like maybe two direct sequels if i recall correctly yes i I'm otherwise looking, it's very 80s very 90s mm. looking at it here it's there there's columns two, the voyage through time and columns three revenge of columns which <laughs> what are way more <laughs> awesome names than you would expect for, for a puzzle <laughs> yeah. series it's sure. What happens in these games? <laughs> <laughs> Columns, you're mixing and matching colors and blocks, but also things are revenge plots. <laughs> <laughs> I I know it's it's definitely one of those games 
kind of lost the time. I I can't imagine Sega ever bringing this back other than these compilations that they put out um, because I don't think it quite has the same, at, at least I presume it does not have the same hook that a lot of other um, puzzle games have. Like I, I know, for example, Caro, you are a Poyo Poyo fiend. <laughs> and this is, this is, mm-hmm. this definitely does not have the uh, love around it that Poyo Poyo does. Uh-uh. <laughs> I'm always going to love Poyo Poyo more. <laughs> but, you know, you can kind of see like, I don't know, the foundation for what they were trying to do and what puzzle games would eventually be on the Genesis and what Sega would do with that. Mm-hmm. For sure. I guess, uh, uh, Aman- Amanda, what, what's your history with just puzzle games in general? Do you tend to play a lot of them? Like, do you play Puzzle League? Do you play Tetris? Do you play Poi Poyo? Or do you just avoid that genre? Nope. Nope. Oh, no. I mean, the only one that I ever really played was Dr. Eggman's Mean Bean Machine, I think, on, like, the GameCube compilation of Sonic games that came out. That was it. I liked it because, like, the beans would, like, merge, and I liked what they looked like. But <laughs> Which is Puyo Puyo. Yeah, that, oh, okay. that's, yeah, yeah, that's just yeah, a, a, a renamed version of Puyo Puyo, like Americanized mm-hmm. a bit. Uh, yeah. Just like, mm-hmm. uh, the, the, the Americans don't care about these cute girl characters. We're just going to... Uh, uh, Dr. Robotnik. Yeah, that's that's what yeah. that's what the kids love. Make beans. <laughs> it's the same thing that happened with um Panel to Pawn in the States. Mm-hmm. It's like let's replace everyone with like Yoshi characters instead. Mm. Yeah. Uh, American <laughs> boys don't like don't like fairies. We we'll give them Yoshi. <laughs> that sort of thing. Um yeah, I I I gotta admit, I have a feeling this is gonna be a pretty short episode. Yeah. <laughs> there's there's only there's, so much depth. <laughs> like I am, I am looking through this. It it seems to be you got the base game and that's it. You just play this for as long as possible. Apparently, some ports offer ultimate modes. Um, I don't know if, what this Genesis port has, but there's flash columns, which involves mining the way through set uh, sets number of lines to get a flashing jewel at the bottom. Doubles that allow two players to work together, and time trial, which uh, rack up points within the time limit i don't know if genesis has those extra modes but apparently they're in some of the in some of them because this thing's been ported to tons of pc pcs the master system the game gear the sega cd game boy color <laughs> just everything and i mean there's only so much flashing gemstones that we can really talk about <laughs> <laughs> for sure so um yeah <laughs> <laughs> well Unless there's anything else you guys really want to say about uh, columns, I think we'll just take our break here and go play it for the week. All right. I will make sure to not compare it too harshly to Dr. Robotnik's Mean Bean Machine. Yeah, be as harsh. <laughs> I know it's hard. I know yeah. it's hard. <laughs> oh, goodness. All right. Yeah. Uh, we're going to go play some columns and we'll be back shortly for all of you to give our full thoughts on this Sega Puzzler. Till then, everyone. And we're back after a week of playing Columns for the Sega Genesis. It's a puzzle game. (laughs) What do we think of this puzzle game? Amanda, as the newly burgeoning Sega Genesis uh, just expert, what did you think of Columns? Oh, I'm honored by that title. Um, <laughs> I wrote, I have like little notes that I take when I do this, but I usually have more than one page. This is just a one pager, but I wrote that it's a rather simple Tetris clone, kind of rudimentary, kind of boring. It's got pretty, pretty graphics. The gemstones are nice. That was about it, though. <laughs> you know, I can get more into other stuff, but <laughs> how, how do you feel? How do you feel about it? It exists in its own plane of sparkly, beautiful gemness mm-hmm. inside of a Genesis. It's yeah. nice to look at. It is. Filled with columns, spoiler alert for anyone who hasn't played this game. There are lots of columns in this game. Um, I like color matching. I'm an emerald gemstone person. I was born in Mm -hmm. May. (laughs) 
<laughs> oh, Carol. There were no I'm aquamarines so for me. <laughs> you just oh. Like you could just hear the struggle in your voice. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm not a ring or a gem person, but if you are that kind of person, you can enjoy this game too. There you go. Um, yeah, this is probably one of the more basic puzzle games I've ever played. Um, cause you know, I'm not like a puzzle fanatic, but I understand the appeal of Dr. Mario, P Panel de Pon, uh, Puyo Puyo, Tetris, you know, even to a slight degree, Yoshi, which we have, I, which I have yeah. played on this show before. I feel like Yoshi offers at least a little bit more strategy with columns. It's just like, all right, here's your column, shift the, shift the gems and, have them latch, uh, line up either vertically or horizontally and get yourself set up. Like, the concept should work, but there's something just so boring about it all. Yeah. Yeah. I wrote, um, the music did not sound like it was from a puzzle game either. It sounded like it was from, like, Castlevania. Very strange, kind of <laughs> ominous, very conjunct meaning like the music's constantly going up and down and up and down. It's like, do 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 You're like, stop it! <laughs> giving me anxiety, I don't need this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, please, can I have a moment of peace while I'm literally just putting gemstones of similar colors together? This is ominous sounding. <laughs> the combos do feel satisfying. I can say that. Yeah. Mm. It probably doesn't help either that like the backgrounds are very like dark and simple. So combined with the ominous music, it's like, what am I? Oh, okay. All right. What is the goal of these columns? Am I this destroying the world? Wild? Yeah. I is mean, this apocalyptic in nature? I don't know. Who knows? Yeah, I guess a little bit. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I'm going to pick your brain a little bit on this one, Carol, because you are such a fan of Puyo Puyo. What is it about Puyo Puyo that just draws you in and makes it such a fun game for you i think compared to columns whereas like in columns you can't really arrange the gemstones like on the side you know what i mean you can mm. only arrange from up and down you can't really move like i don't know but imagine like the three gem thing you can't move mm. the top one to like the side you can only move within the column for Puyo Puyo there's so many ways you can like chain and you can change your arrangement of like Puyo pieces and then that allows you to make more like structures and combinations for you to chain off and make combos with so like in that sense I think Puyo Puyo definitely has a lot more flexibility than Columns does and so because of that it's more satisfying when you do pull off a successful combo so it's like oh look what I've done da -da -da -da. right yeah. yeah, I guess it's limited, purposefully limited because, you know, it's a column. You can only work within the column. You can't, you're not rotating at all, but I don't know. It's just like, I, I, I'll be honest, I played this for 10 minutes and then stopped. Yep. Like that's yeah. all the time yeah. I put into this game because I felt like I'd seen it all. Like there's, uh, there's. So the I, long play on YouTube is an hour and 48 minutes long. And I was like, even that feels too much. Uh, but that's to the yeah. end of the game. Somehow somebody can get to the end of the game, which I presume ends with it just going, da-da, we ran out of levels. <laughs> it, it literally, from what I see in the Wikipedia, it's literally you reached a max amount of points. <laughs> yep. Yeah. And it's just like, congratulations. Hope for the I best. Can't imagine, I don't know. imagine watching that for an hour and 45 minutes or whatever. Oh, God, I can't. The music is so droning and so repetitive that I think that I would probably have an aneurysm before I could finish. Yeah. Someone out there is a Columns fan. There, Someone ha out there, there has, has to be some Columns fan. This, this, so, this got two sequels. It, there had to be a Columns yeah. fan somewhere. Or, you know, maybe the games that we're more familiar with didn't come out until later. I mean, that, that's the only thing I can kind of come up with. I mean. Sorry I, to Columns fans out there. It was, <laughs> it was not for me. It was not for me. <laughs> Play yeah. Puyo Puyo. I, that does sound fun. fun I, game. Yes. It, it's, it's one of those things where at the time, looking at it, it got pretty decent reviews. 
In fact, uh, seeing on here is like is apparently uh, when it was released on Sega Arcade Classics for the Sega CD, um, Wizard Magazine gave it a B plus, saying it's de- describing it as like Tetris but a bit better. I don't believe you. In fact, uh, no. I know I don't believe you because I've played way more Tetris. And I mean, if you're really thinking about it in just a color versus black and white Game Boy, fine. But Tetris is more complex, just structurally. Mm-hmm. But you yes, there's pretty like, colors. <laughs> you also have like different shaped pieces in Tetris. So yeah. you have different statues. So like, oh, so if I get like an I'll walk, what do I do with that? Or if I get like... The straight line piece what do i do with that or work at the tetraminos like mm-hmm. there's more strategy and thinking when it comes to the different shaped pieces in tetris versus in columns where i'm like okay well i guess i could match this gem color with another gem color in such a limited space and on yeah. top of that at least tetris has you know that one song that everybody knows and it's great and it's catchy yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's, it's extremely catchy you get you just get into that groove and you're you're good to go and honestly that, that stupidly catchy puzzle song is just can carry you through but i think that's the other thing with like i think tetris has enough to it on its own that it's just entertaining but paneled upon and puyo puyo and uh, uh you know th- those type of puzzle games um have a have a versus element to them like you could just do a like play by yourself, go for a high score type thing. But to me, that isn't the fun aspect of those games. It's challenging the computer and seeing how well you can clear out your, your lines in order to take them out. Tetris doesn't like Tetris games have that and can be a lot of fun with that, but it doesn't feel as necessary when you play a single single player columns feels like it could really use that mode just to have something active to it, to it. Yeah. Just, Cause it's so, mm-hmm basic i guess is the best way to put it yeah i'd say that and i mean i didn't obviously i'm not like playing columns with anybody either so it's not like we're competitively playing and maybe it's fun with another person who's actually a human and not a computer but i didn't do that so (laughs) i'll be honest i rarely play against other people in puzzle games and i've had way more fun with those other games Mm mm-hmm and I'm just, just you know, I wrote down, uh, <coughs> excuse me, the game can be so long. Like, it can literally just be unending. It's not like it stops at a level. It just kind of keeps going. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> Sorry, I'm still recovering from COVID. <laughs> no worries. Um, yeah. And that's the thing is, like, that's... I. I don't think I think there was another mode where it's like you clear out existing lines and there's sort of like there's your challenge mode. But I think that mm-hmm. was it. That's that you got those two. Mo- you got those two single player modes and then you got the, um, you know, two player mode. And that's about it. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Really, like the only other thing that I wrote down here is that I only recommend this if you just need to check a box. I mean, like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's literally why I played it when I did the Sonic's Ultimate Genesis collection. I got that trophy and I was out. <laughs> yep. <laughs> if you're just a person that's like, I need to play every puzzle game that's ever come out, then play Columns briefly because that's all you can do. <laughs> Pretty much. Um, do we got anything else? Because I've got to be, I'm, I'm tapped. I've never been tapped so fast in my life. I know. It's like literally this is one of the most boring games I think I've ever, not ever played, but one of, one of the. I mean, I, 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 I'll be honest. I've paired up some other games just like as a basic, like just because mm-hmm. I feel like it'd be a little short, like the Donkey Kong arcade games on NES. Talking about the individual Donkey Kong seems a little short. I'm pretty sure I could get it more out of the original Donkey Kong than I can for this game. Yeah. Yeah. You can be like, there's architectural designs, and at least there's characters. What's yeah, their story? There's Donkey Kong. Yeah. Yeah, you can see, <laughs> Boom, we can talk about the, the individual yeah. levels and, and the, 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 how the challenge changes and how it's mm-hmm. different from the arcade version. There's there's stuff to talk about there. There's nothing to say about columns. So, 
yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm tapped. So, um, yeah, <laughs> I think we've said all we wanted to say about columns for the Genesis. Sorry for the short episode, but uh, what's our final verdict? Would you recommend it as an N yes o or tell people to stay away with an N O no? Amanda, let's like turn to you. Big ol' N O. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Caro? Sure, but why would you play columns when you can play Puyo Puyo? Fair. I, I think that's the, the I think that's the crux of it because a lot of other uh, NSO games you're like eh, why not you're already paying for the service it's not a big deal you can try it out and that's why it's kind of like easy to just recommend because you try it out for a little bit see if it's your thing and move on but no if you're looking for a puzzle game really don't waste your time on this one there are so many great puzzle games on the NSO this one is just as Amanda said it's not it. taking a box yep. If you just need to play every Genesis game on the NSO for some inexplicable reason, play it for five minutes and you'll have the entire game. There you go. You've done it. Yep. <laughs> Pretty much. So absolutely an N-O-No -no for me as well. And mm -hmm. uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, but what about all of you? Have you have you played Calms before or was this your first time? If so, I'm sorry. But before we go... <laughs> Where can everyone find you at? Carol, let's start with you. Plug away. Um, you can find me on Twitter um, under Caro Tarot with two underscores. So Caro underscore underscore Tarot. And yeah, you can hear me scream about video games. You can hear me scream about wrestling. And into the void. Isn't that what you want out of your social media? That's what I want. Yeah, of course. So go follow me. <laughs> I, and I'm, I have a podcast. Um, so you can... Listen to C Squared on YouTube. Yeah, definitely check that one out. Uh, lasts a lot longer than this episode. <laughs> with, yes. <laughs> with multiple topic, topics covered. New episode coming soon. There we go. What about you, Amanda? Where can everyone find you at? You can find me on Twitter at Digimanda underscore and on Twitch at just Digimanda. Um, I play a lot of weird video games like Zelda randomizers and Zelda mods. Very weird Zelda mods. There's some strange ones out there. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. <laughs> oh, thank you both so much for joining me. And if all of you joining us enjoyed the episode, let us know in the comments. And please consider supporting us at patreon.com slash dvgaming, which includes our live audience tier that will allow you to watch Game Club live as it's being recorded. But now it's time for the Wheel of Games to choose next week's title as I'm joined by my special guests, The Golden Bolt and Moriarty. Are you both ready to see what game we're playing? Sure. I'm so excited. <laughs> you sound so excited. This is this this could be pain or this could be eh, mild. <laughs> Who knows? But let's bring up that wheel, give it a spin, and see what we're in for. And this week we are playing Sin and Punishment for the Nintendo 64. Okay, that's a good one. Yeah, we got a got quite the choice right there. That's yeah. hmm. That'll be interesting on a Switch Pro controller for me. <laughs> so there you have it. We'll see you next time as we cover Sin and Punishment. Thanks for watching, and until next time, bye.